limitations way I come back to another video engineering clock finally available only 200 pieces limited um, also limited to one and a half month for selling time so uh, yeah link in the info box description pin comment whatsoever check it out it <laughs> looks pretty good in my opinion I love having it here other than that we are going to talk about something that many students have problems with even people who study already at, at university and I don't know why it's fraction addition and we are going to debunk the mystery behind fraction addition today why it's so hard no it's it's really not hard it's pretty easy actually if you know about basic rules like distributivity and exponentiation rules we are going to dive right in at first I would like to take a look at a really easy example that basically goes back to the sets of numbers playlist where we deal with a common denominator. So we are going to take a look at two thirds plus one third. And we know by the visual interpretation of adding fractions together, this is just two thirds of a pie. Okay, you are going to slice it up into two thirds. This is something like this. And then you are going to add another third to it and you are going to get one complete apple pie out of it. So the answer is probably one, but why is it one? We are going to rewrite the fractions at first. You know each and every fraction a over b can be written as a times one over b, meaning two over three is nothing but two times one third plus, and well, one third is nothing but one times one third. If you only have one apple pie, then you only have one apple pie, all right? Okay, so this is one times one third. Oh, those pie analogies, they are superb. And now by the distributivity laws, we know that one third is a common factor and we can actually factor it out. Meaning we are going to bring the one third to the outside, leaving us with two plus one times one third. Well, two plus one is obviously just three. Okay, this is pretty easy to calculate by the piano axioms, for example. So this gives us three times one third. <clears throat> three times one third is just three out of three pieces makes one and well obviously this holds now now we are going to take a look at an example where we don't have a common denominator here right now it was pretty easy we had a common factor of one third common denominator but what happens if we take a look at let's say um, three quarters plus one fifth what is this exactly i mean even rewriting the fractions accordingly, like we did here, won't give us a common factor. We would have three times one quarter plus one times one fifth. Not a common factor here. Not possible to factor something out. This is why we use something that we have talked about in the last video, I'll link to the playlist and stuff down there at the top of the description. We are going to expand fractions such that we cleverly get a common denominator out of this. And this is just a basic method that always works. I'm going to give you a basic algorithm that is going to work all the time. Later, we are going to talk about smart ways to expand fractions using the LCM, for example. But this, but this is not a topic of the video right now. We are going to expand fractions now. How did we do that? Well, think back, expanding fractions is just multiplying a fraction cleverly by a one that we are going to choose by our situation that we are in. All right, so three quarters times one plus one fifth times one. Now, this one can be rewritten as a fraction, for example, three over three, four over four, five over five. And this is what we are going to use here to get a common denominator by the means of fraction multiplication. Meaning what we basically do is we turn the one into a cleverly chosen fraction plus one fifth times another cleverly chosen fraction. And here's something that many teachers will show you. They say you just need to cross multiply. And heuristically, this makes perfect sense. This is totally fine. But many students don't know why they can cross multiply. It's just because of fraction expansion. All right. So what's the idea behind it? We want to get a common denominator, meaning we are going to take our five and I'm going to put it here. We are going to expand this fraction by five over five. Meaning what we get down here by fraction multiplication is going to be four times five, this is 20. Now we are going to take the four here and we are going to expand this fraction by four over four exactly. 
Which does make sense, right? Because 5 times 4 is the same as 4 times 5 gives us 20. 1 over 20 is going to be a common factor that we can factor out later in the game. And this is good. This is something that we wanted. And now just fraction multiplication. It's pointwise multiplication, meaning multiplying top and bottom together and then we are done. So all the tops together and all the bottoms together. Leaving us with 3 times 5 over 4 times 5. I'm going to write everything out such that you can see the process here. Plus 1 times 5, uh, 4, I'm terribly sorry, over 4 times 5 or 5 times 4 but multiplication is commutative so it really doesn't matter. 4 times 5 is going to be 120. 3 times 5 is going to be 15. So 15 over 20 plus 4 over 20. Meaning by the same means as up here we have 120 1 20th as a common factor, we can factor it out. Meaning in parentheses we have 15 plus 4 left times 1 over 20. 15 plus 4 is going to give us 19. So this is 19 over 20. And then we are done. Pretty easy, right? If you know about this up here and the distributive laws, you are basically done. This is all that three behind this idea of adding fractions together. It's elementary school mathematics basically, but many students just forget about it. And there's one other way to rewrite exactly this step. Many teachers will show you that you can just rewrite the fraction addition accordingly. You are going to take one big vinculum, put a 20 under it. Okay, this is all common denominator. And then you are just doing the operation that we have up here. But this is basically the same thing. We are going to multiply it up here. This is just representing our fractions accordingly and then just getting rid of the parentheses using the associativity in the natural numbers, for example. And this is it. Now, there's a, a rule basically. So you can generalize this to each and every a, B, C, D that we are having here. I'm going to show you this rule and, and if you remember this rule you can basically just plug in numbers but it's better for you if you remember what we did here. So if we have some fractions A over B and adding it to a fraction C over D then we are going to cross multiply. This is what I said before. This is basically the, the process here giving us a common denominator. So we have something over b times d and then we are going to cross multiply like this. We are going to multiply a by d and then we are going to add the multiplication of b times c together. b times c not plus c. And then we are done. And this holds obviously only if b and d are not equal to zero, but in the rational numbers we have restricted the denominator to be non-zero. So this works out. And this is basically the generalized rule that you can use and this is a little pattern that you can make use of basically to remember fraction addition. But like I said before, if you know about two simple rules, distributive laws and expanding fractions, exponentiation rules at that, then you are basically done with fraction addition. Don't just learn the cooking recipe. Try to understand the mathematics behind it. And if you start doing that, everything's going to be way easier. Other than that, I thank guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel, like. If you have any further questions, leave them down there in the comments below. Please. Other than that, engineering clock, blah, blah, blah. Take a look at the main channel. I'm until the next video. I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao.